Bucket Challenge! Hello friend, Steve Tangle here, and welcome to the 2023 NHL Stanley Cup Playoff Bracket Challenge on SDPN according to me. We did a first round preview with me, Adam, and Jesse, but all that matters is me. We are not going to stop at the first round. We are going through the entire Stanley Cup playoffs doing a bracket to decide who is going to win the 2023 Stanley Cup and it's going to happen. Everything I say in this video is going to be correct. As always, am I right, Drew? Producer Drew? Producer, he said I'm right. Wait till you see where I have Colorado. Real quick before we start, if you think you know which way it's going to go, head on over to Sports Interaction. When the puck drops or the ball goes up in the air because there's multiple playoffs going on right now, you can go to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Like I said, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN and download the Sports Interaction app using the QR code that you see on the screen, but only if you're 19 plus, please play responsibly. 2023 Stanley Cup Playoff Bracket Challenge, here we go starting in the East. First, we have our top division winner, in fact, the top team in the National Hockey League, top regular season team in the NHL ever in the Boston Bruins, taking on the wild card Florida Panthers. It's funny, I've been watching the Panthers' progress over the last few weeks, maybe month or so, and the more they've played, the more I'm like, I don't think anyone really wants to play them. Matthew Kachuk is playing amazing, the team is picking up steam, they're getting saves from Alex Lyon, of all people, sure. But this is Boston. They won 65 games for a reason, they're relatively healthy, it seems, waiting to see what happens with Bergeron, they said it's precautionary. If you're a Bruins fan, you have to love what your team did at the deadline. This is not a bet against the Florida Panthers. It's a bet on the Boston Bruins. Bruins in five. Series number two, because of course this is series number two! This series has been written in stone for weeks now. Really, it's been written in stone since around Christmas. The second place in the Atlantic, Toronto Maple Leafs, taking on the third place in the Atlantic, Tampa Bay Lightning, for the second year in a row. The rematch! Listen, if you were looking at this objectively, you, you didn't know anything about the history of the Tampa Bay Lightning. You didn't know anything about the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs. You would look at this series on paper and you would pick the Toronto Maple Leafs. These two teams went toe to toe last year. Tampa needed overtime in game six and game seven was decided by one goal and in somewhat controversial fashion, no, you know, depending on who you ask. The Leafs made a wild amount of deadline acquisitions while only giving up Pierre Engvall and Rasmus Sandin off the roster. They acquired Sam Lafferty, Noel Achari for the bottom six, Ryan O'Reilly, who you can put anywhere, and Jake McCabe. Obviously, the playoff experience and sheer resiliency of the Tampa Bay Lightning should make you bet on them. And the Leafs' uh, recent history that is... It's not just recent, it's starting to get like kind of long of uh, choking. I hate being this naive. I hate it! But, oh, am I really gonna say this? Am I really gonna say this? This year, oh, this year feels a, it feels different. The Leafs feel like a better version, a, a more suitable for playoff hockey team than they did last year in Tampa. It's a bit of a wounded animal. They've lost some pieces. Some pieces are hurt. Some pieces are going to play hurt. For that reason, I have the Leafs in six. Now for our other division winner, Carolina Hurricanes taking on our other wildcard team, the New York Islanders. Difficult series to predict from the Islanders' perspective, just because they've had so much recent success in the playoffs with the, you know, outside exception of last year. They feel like they're built for playoff hockey because they are, and they've gotten such immaculate goaltending in their recent playoff matchups, and Ilya Sorokin is better than any of the goalies the Islanders have had in their recent playoff matchups. Like, he's a legitimate perennial Vesna, and you could argue heart candidate. Having Barzal as a question mark hurts. We'll see if he gets into the series. I suspect he will. That being said, Carolina is in their position for a reason. The Metro was a great division this year, and Carolina, who has had some difficulty getting over the hump at times, just feels like they're better built 
for playoff hockey than maybe they have been in years past. Goaltending is a bit of a question mark, but Carolina is so hard to beat defensively. They have offensive weapons. They're going to outshoot you every single game, almost. I have the Carolina Hurricanes winning in six. I know that series is popular for an upset. I'm going Canes. Last in the East, we have the second team in the Metro in the New Jersey Devils. The new kid taking on the New York Rangers, who made it all the way to the final four last year against Tampa. They had Tampa on the ropes too! And then Andre Palat turned the whole thing around, as he often does. This is not going to be popular with Devils fans. I know what you think I'm going to say. Uh, the Rangers added Tarasenko, and they added Patrick. Kane and they have all this firepower up front. What do the Rangers have that the Devils don't have? I, I mean, the Devils have, they have lots of weapons. They have Palat, who I just mentioned. Ironic. Heck of a guy to just bust out of your back pocket there, New Jersey. For me, the difference lies in the games I have watched from the New Jersey Devils. And I say this as a Leaf fan, I remember getting super duper excited about a young, fast, well-performing regular season team that played a bit of a softer style. They can bang, they can crash, I just don't see them being able to do it like the Rangers can. I was really debating between six or seven games. I think I'm gonna regret this, but I'm gonna say Rangers in six. We head to the West where the Colorado Avalanche, who led the Central Division, take on the new kid again, the Seattle Kraken. It took Seattle twice as long to make the Stanley Cup playoffs as it did for the Vegas Golden Knights, but here they are, a solid team who's gotten better than expected goaltending and just consistent production throughout the lineup. Outside of Jared McKay, they don't have a ton of like high-end scorers who are just gonna beat you. They're just steady. All through the lineup they are steady and they have underrated guys. Not unlike Vegas. And for that reason, maybe they're being underrated here. But man, watching Colorado over the last little while, over the last month of the season, while they've been battling injuries the entire time, they haven't had Landeskog, Makar has been in and out of the lineup, they've still been running over teams, and Nathan McKinnon in the final game of the season, I, I mean, what a monster, what an alien. I think Seattle's gonna get some value experience here and maybe they give Colorado a bigger run for their money than we're anticipating but even without McCarr, Taves, Byram on that back end they're a real hard team to beat. I got Colorado in five and maybe I'm just not accounting for them missing their stars as much as I should. Our next series we have the Dallas Stars taking on the Minnesota Wild. Two teams whose primary color is green as I pointed out on the podcast. Has that ever happened? I have no idea. All I know is the winner gets to be called the Stars. That's a historical joke, you see. With Colorado, we mentioned injuries. Uh, there was a lineup that I saw today showing the Minnesota Wild, and I thought, boy, this sure seems to be missing something. And the answer was, oh, it's Joel Erickson Eck. Brock Faber could be an interesting little X factor for the Minnesota Wild, and they've gotten good goaltending. And even if one of their goaltenders go down, you know you're gonna get good goaltending either out of Marc-Andre Fleury or Philip Gustafson. This is less against the Minnesota Wild and more, I think people are seriously sleeping on the Dallas Stars. Speaking of which, John Klingberg is on the Minnesota Wild now. His first appearance back in the playoffs is gonna be against Dallas. Fun. But I really like some of the things Dallas is doing. Jake Ottinger is playing fantastic hockey. Joe Pavelski, after a bit of a struggle at certain times this season, has picked it up. Jason Robertson is still a monster. They just are getting good contributions out of everyone and top five goaltending in the league. Max Domi looks like he was a pretty good pickup. The stars are seriously slept on. And everyone, I think, is forgetting how unreal Miro Haskinen was in that bubble run with the Stars taking on Tampa in the Stanley Cup Final. For that reason, I have Dallas in six. Up next, the winners of the Pacific Division, the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the Winnipeg Jets. I love reruns. I don't know if Jets fans do. That, that seems that seems awful. Hey, Fleury's not there anymore. There's a bonus. Actually, I guess what's confusing is who the heck is Vegas gonna use in net? Depending on the health or injury status of their goalies, they could use four different guys. But there's the thing, I don't think Vegas is going to beat the Winnipeg Jets in the goaltending department. Uh, Logan Thompson, if he gets in, definitely not at 100%, no. Aiden Hill, Laurent Brassois, 
Jonathan Quick, like, way past Jonathan Quick days. I don't think the Golden Knights win that battle. I just think they win every other battle. I like their ability to score more. I like their ability to defend more. I like their depth more. I just like their game more. The Golden Knights are really difficult to predict, too, because they're getting all these guys back off IR and Mark Stone, etc. But that makes them difficult to predict. First of all, is there going to be some rust? Second of all, are they 100%? 80% of Mark Stone makes most teams better. What if he's not 80%? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say everyone's going to be healthy. So I'm going to say Vegas in six. Last but not least, I think this is going to be the series of the first round. Two teams who should flatly not be playing each other in the first round? In the first round! The Edmonton Oilers taking on the LA Kings. Two teams who got exactly what the doctor ordered at the trade deadline. The Edmonton Oilers had a great team. Couldn't defend. They acquire Matias Ekholm. Amazing. Hottest team in the league. The LA Kings. Really solid team. Cannot stop a beach ball. They go out. They acquire Vlad Gavrikov on defense and Yunus Korpisalo in net. They are one of the hottest teams in the league and so hard to beat. On top of that, these two teams feel built for playoff hockey. They super duper do not like each other at all. And with good reason, they played against each other last year. And even that was a dogfight going seven games. The Kings didn't have Drew Doughty. This year they do. On the Oilers' end, outside of Ekholm, uh, Connor McDavid is an actual demonic monster. And if this series goes late, which the Oilers won that series, by the way, uh, Leon Dreisaitl will have both ankles this time. I think this one is going to be a slobber knocker, game seven, overtime, Edmonton. So that's all eight first round series in the books. What do we got for round two? Let's go back out east. Boston taking on Toronto because of course this sucks, dude. All the things I said about the Leafs in the Tampa preview still apply. O'Reilly and Achari, unreal adds to that team in their roles. And Achari would know the Bruins pretty decently from his time there. Is he going to take it easy on the Bruins because they're the Bruins? Uh, I doubt it on account of Luke Shen just beat up his former teammate in Patrick Maroon. The Leafs are missing Jake Muzzin, so they bring in Jake McCabe to fulfill their tough left-handed defenseman named Jake Quota. The Leafs are way better, way more suited for playoff hockey than they were last year. And they got to take on the Bruins. Not just the Bruins, who are the Leafs boogeyman at the best of times and the worst of times. The Bruins are on a historical clip right now. And the hottest team, maybe in the league, outside of Edmonton, they won their final eight games. I don't know how you beat that. Listen, injuries can change everything. The puck is made of rubber. It can change everything. I love a great story and would love for the Leafs to win this series. I can't do it. They won 65 games, man. I have Boston winning. The other second round series in the East, Carolina taking on New York. This is a fun one because I think their first round opponents heavily play into how the second round is going to go. With the Rangers, I was talking about the Devils and how they're not exactly like the toughest, most grinding team in the NHL yet. They might become that, but they're not that yet. Even if you're one of the better teams in the league or at very least in the Eastern Conference, you don't want to play the Islanders. That's no fun. Even if you sweep them, it's going to be an awful sweep. It's not going to be any fun. It's going to be a terrible eight days. And I think for Carolina, it's going to be a real culture shock to go from the New York Islanders, who played this slog style of hockey, to the New York Rangers, who will skate you through the Earth's crust. This is going to be a fun series to watch. Two teams who can really go. I think the Hurricanes are a little bit more clever and methodical and they're really deep and they're really smart but the rangers play really fun laser quest pew pew hockey and that can get you to the final four we saw that with edmonton last year i had the rangers as the slight upset in the first round i have them as an upset again they're gonna beat carolina back out west second round series between the colorado avalanche and the dallas stars this is where i think you could see a clash of the titans in a true beautiful hockey clinic. If the Avalanche were healthy, they'd be a little deeper. And if they still had Nazem Kadri, etc., 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 it'd be harder for the Dallas Stars to do this. But I think you staple Miro Haskinen to Nathan McKinnon 
for four to seven games. Obviously, Miko Rantanen still exists, but if you're able to shut down either of those guys, even if the other guy still pops off, I think you can take the Avs. Georgiev has been really slept on this season, super underrated, really good season, but Jake Ottinger, man, I, I can't bring myself to bet against him. I have Dallas winning this. And this one is gonna be a dog fight. The other Western Conference semifinal series, the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the Edmonton Oilers. This is going to be beautiful hockey. It's going to be violent hockey. It's gonna be low scoring. It's gonna be high scoring. It's gonna be everything, everywhere, all at once. With the Vegas Golden Knights, I feel like you can have a question of Who's your goalie? Who's your full-time starter? I, I think you can sometimes survive that in the first round. You're just not surviving that question against the Edmonton Oilers. I don't know how you bet against Edmonton here. That's why I'm not. I have Edmonton going on. Eastern Conference Final. The Boston Bruins taking on the New York Rangers. An original six battle. This is going to be absolutely fantastic i i kind of hope the playoffs go this way it's gonna be some beautiful hockey to watch two extremely good teams not much between them up front the big difference i think is on d uh goaltending pretty good matchup all mark who's gonna win the vesna shesterkin who won it last year but on d oh man i like what the bruins have a lot more listen if given the choice between adam fox or charlie mcavoy i pick adam fox but the rangers one through six I like more than the Rangers. And I think I've already mentioned it, uh, 65 wins. I have the Bruins. In the Western Conference Final, this ought to bring back some late 90s nostalgia. The Dallas Stars taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid and his band of merry men take on Jake Ottinger. Need I say more? Haskinen having to go toe to toe with Nathan McKinnon and then Connor McDavid in back to back rounds feels like it should be illegal. Ottinger is such a ridiculous goalie, but the thing about the Edmonton Oilers even at their worst, they don't really get goalied. Like they simply don't allow it to happen to them and they have just too many weapons. I think officiating is gonna be a massive part of that series if they call it a certain way. Huge advantage for the Oilers. If they call it another way, I think it's a huge advantage for the Stars. Tough call, tough call. Two teams I really respect. I'm gonna take Edmonton. Which means our Stanley Cup final is gonna be the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Boston Bruins and what a great story it would be for the league if Connor McDavid, the Hart winner, the Art Ross winner, the Rocket Richard winner, the heir apparent, the king of the National Hockey League is finally crowned with a Stanley Cup against an original six team, the best regular season team we've ever seen. It would be a great story. And I think that's how the movie writers would write it. I have Boston. I think every conversation comes down to, yeah, obviously Boston is the favorite, but how do they lose? To me, I don't think you overthink this. They don't. The Boston Bruins will win the 2023 Stanley Cup. So, producer Drew, show the people what I got. This is a big bracket. Uh, I, I think I got some, some bold takes. A few underdogs. Uh, I, uh, which pick surprised you the most? I, please don't say the Leafs losing to Boston, okay? I left my blue glasses at home, even though I am at home. 65 wins, man. What do you agree with the most? What do you disagree with the most? Who do you think is going to win the Conn Smythe Trophy? One of the members of the perfection line feels like a good bet. Pasternak, Bergeron, uh, Marchand, but... Don't sleep on McAvoy and also Linus Allmark, dude. Curious to see how many games Swayman plays throughout the playoffs too. Ladies and gentlemen, for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Let the games begin.